Uh, amphora. It's in the British Museum today, dated to around 450 BC and attributed to the Nausicaa painter. And what we're looking at is a scene where two bulls are being sacrificed in the context of a Corregic festival, uh, probably at a sanctuary to the god Dionysus. And we can tell that because of the two tripods that are present behind each of the bulls, which were traditionally given as prizes in theatrical and musical competitions. Now, animal sacrifice was the key ritual throughout Greek antiquity. It was an act of belief. Um, that is evident in the quote that I've included here from Xenophon's memorabilia. We have a look at what he says about Socrates. He says he offered sacrifices constantly and made no secret of it, now in his home, now at the altars of the state temples. So the fact that Socrates participated in animal sacrifice is seen uh, or used as a way of proving that he did believe in the ancient Greek gods. As well as that, it was a direct means of communication with the gods. So it's another example of reciprocity or this back and forth relationship between the ancient Greeks and the pantheon of deities that they worshipped. It's very interesting from this vase as well that we can see that different roles were performed during animal sacrifice and more broadly religion in general by men and women. So whilst the men might have performed the actual sacrifice and the killing of the animal itself, we see here that women were involved in preparing the animal and you know, very specifically decorating it. Now, the fact that animals were actually decorated before they were sacrificed is first made evident in Homer's Odyssey in Book 3. Here we've got Telemachus arriving on Pylos to, to meet Nestor, and we're told that Nestor is sacrificing bulls on the beach to Poseidon. And this is what he says. He says, go then, one or other of you to the plain, tell the stockman to look thee out a heifer, and come on here with it at once. Another must go to Telemachus' ship and invite all the crew, leaving two men only in charge of the vessel. Someone else will run and fetch Lyrcus, the goldsmith, to gild the horns of the heifer. So in Nestor's case, he's very, very rich, so he can afford to gild the horns of the animal that he is going to sacrifice. But more commonly, as we can see here, there were what are known as stomata, kind of garlands or ribbons that were hung on the horns of the particular animal. And this was a job traditionally done by young, unmarried girls, or harpanoi, which is our Greek word. It's possible that we are looking at two personifications here of the Greek goddess of victory, Nike, albeit ones without wings, due to the fact that this sacrifice seems to be uh, celebrating victories in a competition. So there is that possibility as well to consider. One other thing that I'd like to just point out about this particular vase is that it depicts an ideal sacrifice, one in which the animals do not protest. In fact, they're almost pleased to be sacrificed to the Greek gods. So an idealistic one in contrast to, for example, the Parthenon frieze, which shows a much more realistic version with an animal actually pulling against the uh, attendants that are taking it up to the Acropolis to be sacrificed and we can see that in the way it lifts its head in protest. 